someone knows what happened to William and they may get to read these words. The truth will rise to the surface because our desire for it is greater than the obscurity that it hides behind. A woodcarver was once asked, how do you create such beautiful carvings? He responded, I just chip away at the wood that is in the way and it reveals itself. Truth is a force to be reckoned with. It is a one constant in all the variations. And so as we continue to chip away at what is obscuring the view, we will eventually see it. Taking a further look. Another very curious situation also unfolded in the William Tyrrell case when the sniffer dog was brought in to pick up William's set. It was confirmed that nothing was found, although it had been reported in the media that the scent was picked up within the boundaries of the property. This story has been discounted and it has been reaffirmed that no scent was picked up at all, not within the property or anywhere outside of the boundary of the property. There is, however, nothing confirming about whether the inside of the house was ever checked. You would think that William Scent would have been all over the property, in the foster grandmother's garden bed where he accidentally or deliberately, according to the foster mother, rode his bike, all over his bike and helmet, on the deck where he was drawing and all over the paper and pencils, out in the yard where he was placed into a tree by his foster mother and encouraged to climb. But we are given the story of how the property had been contaminated, trampled through because it wasn't cordoned off. And this is supposed to equal no scent found of William. We have heard the story of how William went missing from his foster grandmother's house in Kendall and for proof, we are shown a photo of his Spider-Man's outfit. Most of the above mentioned would not have been contaminated by police or volunteers or trail bikes or horses and yet nothing, no sign of William anywhere but in a photograph. There is however another possibility that should be thoroughly investigated who handed over the item of clothing or the object which contained William sent to the dog squad. This is extremely important information to ascertain because if it didn't contain William's odour or scent, then the dog would have been given a bum steer to begin with. If William was at the property, why wasn't he sent picked up? Just maybe there was no scent found of William because there was no scent to find. The obvious is often overlooked, which brings us back to the photograph of William in his Spider-Man's outfit. So far, this appears to be the only solid evidence that places William in Kendall, but just how solid is it? The photograph of William in his Spider-Man's outfit has become very prevalent in the William Terrell case. Foster Mother explains. And that photo I took, was um, he was actually looking up at me and I sort of crouched down in a really weird position and taken the photo. The explanation by the foster mother of the angle of the photograph draws my attention to the fact that the foster mother is in a crouched down position while William is still looking up. The photo of William in the Spider-Man outfit was not the initial photo that was handed over to the police to identify him by. It is alleged that the photo of William in his Spider-Man's outfit was taken at 9.37 on the morning that William disappeared. The photo shows William sitting on the back deck of the foster grandmother's house in Kendall and his sister can be seen in the background. On the podcast, it is explained. Yeah, so that first photo they released for the Amber Alert on the first day was a photo of him from his daycare taken some weeks before. Um, and it wasn't until after they released that photo that Jane actually remembered that she'd taken those photos. Obviously, her mind was just racing and, and you know, couldn't, couldn't think straight. So she remembered um, after that that she had taken some photos on her digital camera just minutes before he went missing. So that photo of William wearing exactly what he was wearing when he went missing was then released to the media 
on the Saturday. And since that day, it's, as we know, been circulated far and wide. A report explains why William had a black eye in the photo. William's black eye. August 2014. Ben Atwood calls William's birth mother to say the boy has a black eye sustained when he is climbing up on the foster father and lost his balance and fell. Now, what's important to note here is that William had a black eye during that visitation. What had caused that? According to his, his foster parents, his foster mother specifically, um, they were at home. She was having a cup of tea with a friend who had come over um, to visit and William was crawling up on the couch to sit on her lap for a cuddle. And uh, as kids do, crawling up there, lost his balance. He fell off and hit his head on the corner of the coffee table. Um, so he had a bruised eye as a result of that. We are told that William fell while with the foster mother and when losing balance with the foster father. So unless William had two falls, there was obviously some confusion in the reporting. When the foster mother remembered how she had taken a photo of William shortly before his disappearance, she then released it to the police. The reason given for the photo being cropped before it was released by the police was to keep William's sister anonymous. This makes no sense at all, as William's sister cannot be recognised in the photo, cropped or not, as her hair is obscuring her face. The foster mother tells us she took the photo with a digital camera, and yet the foster grandmother tells us the photo was taken with a mobile phone. Plus, there are many uncropped versions of the photo online to view. The main crop to the photo appears to be the window behind William. The top of his head has been cropped off. Why would that be? It is actually an interesting point and not as far-fetched as the question may seem, as in this photo, it has William transposed from being below the window to now being in front of it. In this photo, the sole of William's left foot is facing us. In this photo, the sole of William's foot is at an angle. William's head is below the window on the left and covering the bottom of the window on the right. In the photo, William's leg appears to be floating in mid-air and his sister appears to have her leg out to the side. It is obvious that the photo has been tampered with, but by who and why? Before the crop, the window above William's head can be clearly seen to be casting reflections which show us nothing but to a well-trained expert in the field that could view the original photo, the reflections could be significant. An expert could figure out according to date, place, weather and time why the shadows were different from one photo to the next. They could figure out why William has moved position from one photo to the next. All these questions need answering. Photos online can be tampered with. We don't have the original, so it's difficult to know exactly what has transpired with all these changes. And there is no way of knowing which one, if any of these are taken from the original photo. It certainly would be well worth a thorough investigation. <laughs>